On this episode of Doing the Most, we're going to take a tour of the Doing the Most kegging setup. Moment brews and various artists, everything from meat to roast. Big creation, fermentation, and heat creation, doing the most. This is a viewer requested video, uh, and also there was a little bit of an exchange for this video, so I'm excited to show you the musical gift that landed in our inbox at some point uh, in exchange for this video. So since we started putting out videos where we're doing more kegging than we are bottle conditioning, we've had quite a few folks reach out and ask us to show off what it is we're doing with our kegging setup. And I'm gonna just preface this now by saying I don't have a kegerator. That's on the list of doing the most projects to do a build out. So what you're gonna see is kind of the bare bones equipment that we're working with here. And I've got you on the selfie stick so that way we can be a little bit more mobile. I will apologize up front for my audio setup. This is what we're working with right now because I could not find the adapter for the lapel mics. So let's go check it out. Ba -ba -be -da -boo. So I'm sure you all recognize the studio space. Uh, it is as yet unfinished. You can see there's only one wall of soundproofing that's gone up yet. And uh, some things that are uh, brewing and in storage, light setup, all that. Well, on the other end of the room, we've got the kegs of things that are drinkable. So right now we've got three kegs in operation. I'll show you the other kegs that we've got out in the garage. We don't consume a whole lot as a household. So I don't actually have currently a three keg regulator. I'm gonna get probably a four tap regulator when I move toward the kegerator system because we wanna put multiple things on tap at any given time. One of those being a root beer. This is a non-alcoholic root beer, just like a soda fountain root beer. And sparkling water, it'd be nice to have on tap. And so I haven't invested in a regulator for multiple kegs yet because I just haven't felt the need to. So for serving these, you can kind of rely on the pressure in the keg to push the, the liquid up and out if you're only having a pint or three each night. So if they need a little added pressure, I can just hook up the CO2 tank and hit it with a little gas and, uh, and up that serving pressure on it. Currently what I have on tap here in the house is a version of our Wampus Cat Braggot that is actually not technically a Braggot. This one has no hops and no malt and the bittering in there is hops extract. It didn't come out great and some of the fermentable sugars I guess cooked to become non-fermentable, so it's, it ends a little sweeter than I'd like it, but friends seem to have loved this when we had a little backyard social distance gathering the other day. And then also in here is Skeeter Pea that I have on tap. That is a five gallon batch out of 10 that we did, and we're working on a Skeeter Pea video. Uh, we've got one on the channel, but we wanted to update one that was a little clearer on how to do it with a five gallon batch, because we brew 10 gallons and it can get kind of confusing in the video if you're looking at it from that perspective. This is our CO2 tank. Uh, I started out with a CO2 tank that I had refurbished and then I entered that into the rotation program at our local homebrew store. So our local homebrew store for a 20 pound tank like this, it's like 30 bucks, something like that to swap the tank for a fresh full tank of CO2. And so when my other tank uh, leaked out through the regulator, womp womp, I was able to take it over, spend 30 bucks, and just swap it right out with a 20 pound tank. And so whenever this tank is empty, which this one should last me a year or so, but whenever this one empty, I can take it over to the local homebrew store and swap it out for another tank, another 30 bucks, no big deal. To regulate the gas out of your CO2 tank, you need a regulator. And uh, so my regulator is one that I got off of Amazon. It was like $66 shipped. And this one has two gauges, one of which shows you the pressure going out, so your serving or your carbonating pressure. The other gauge shows you the pressure inside the tank, so it lets you know how close to depleted that CO2 tank could be. A lot of folks are really intimidated by switching to kegging. 
And really, uh, I would say the only real intimidating factor is the expense of it because the learning curve isn't as steep as you might think it is. And I always thought it was. A little bit of reading, r slash homebrewing on Reddit is a great resource to, to learn about kegging. It's super easy. So on your regulator, that big red valve on the front, that controls the pressure out to your kegs. So you use that red knob to set your carbonating PSI or dial down to your serving PSI. And other than that, as long as you've got some good clamps to connect your hosing and you've got the right size of hosing, which this is just the same standard hosing that you would use uh, for a racking system to rack off your meads or beers, it's pretty foolproof. You connect up all your hoses, you pressurize everything, spray it with some really soapy water so you can check for bubbles that indicate leaks. If you've got no leaks, you're pretty well good to go. Now, the, my original regulator had a leak in it that I could not detect, and that's how I lost a whole tank of CO2. So you really wanna make sure that your regulator is in good operating condition, get it refurbished or refurbish it yourself if you need to. I just went ahead and bought a new one because it wasn't that expensive to get one that I trusted, $66, no big deal. Also, uh, serving out of kegs, you're gonna need taps. These taps, I got two for, I think it was $18 off of Amazon. I'll put all the links in the video description for this. And these taps have a ball lock connector. My kegging system is ball lock. There's also a pin lock system. These are typically recycled from old soda kegs. So when you're switching to kegging, you wanna determine if you're gonna go ball lock or pin lock. It seems to me that ball lock kegging systems are more common. So that's what I went with and that's what I was able to find all these parts for. So these uh, attach to the ball lock on top of the keg and then just allow you to serve with the press of a button. So your kegs have a lid on top that's pressurized. You might have seen me burp those in the past. And they have an in and an out. The in goes to the top of the keg. That's where your gas goes in and it exposes it to that carbon dioxide so that it can absorb into solution. And then the out actually comes from the bottom of the keg. And so whenever you're serving, you serve from the bottom. So when we have been sharing things from our kegs with our friends, we've just been putting the kegs into an igloo cooler full of ice and chilling them. And since it serves from the bottom, typically, it stays cold all night long. I find that it's pretty effective when you're only having a social gathering every few weeks or whatever. So that's the, that's the system we have set up in here and those are the things we have on tap. It's fairly simple to operate. You've probably seen the videos on how to carbonate something. Typically I'll put it under 20 to 30 PSI for a couple of days and that exposes it enough that a few days later it's ready to serve or you can hit it really high, like 50 PSI for an hour take it off of the gas, shake it for about a half an hour, hit it with 50 PSI again for a while, take it off, shake it, and you can have something carbonated within a day if you need to. So pretty simple, fairly reliable, beats the heck out of bottling and capping and going through all that mess. And uh, I've been fairly happy with it. Now I traded a video camera <laughs> actually for most of the kegging equipment that I have here and then others of it is borrowed. And like I said, the tank is on loan. So, this came together pretty cheap. If you look around on Craigslist, you can get a similar type of setup pretty cheap too. So now we're walking through the kitchen here. Oh, what's that? Is that an experimental recipe boiling away on the stove? Wow, maybe that'll come to the channel sometime soon. I hope so because it's got this really interesting mystery ingredient. I've been brewing today. Good times. Here's another keg, you know, they're just kind of around. That one actually, what the hell is that? That one's empty, it needs to be cleaned and sanitized. And in the garage, I've got a few more kegs that were reclaimed from a shop. And so those need to be cleaned and refurbished and sanitized. Refurbishing kegs is not really a big deal. There's some O-rings that typically need to be replaced and other connectors that need to be sanitized and tightened up, but it's a pretty simple system. It is not super complex. And as long as you keep an eye on everything while you're disassembling and reassembling it, maybe take pictures along the way to confirm you're doing what you think you're doing and uh, keeping track of progress, it's really easy to refurbish and repair these things. No big deal at all. In talking about keg repair and refurbishing, like I said, there's just a few parts 
you can get these kits. And these kits typically have like the O-rings that you need. That big one is for the keg lid. It's all relatively standard stuff. And you can even build your own setups. For example, you can get the ball locks that go on the posts and create your own hose arrays if you'd like to. I just can't stress enough how easy it is to get into kegging. And so while we don't have a really robust kegging system right now, as we are working toward building the kegerator, we have found a lot of joy in not having to clean, sanitize cap bottles and wait a month before trying something that's sparkling. So I hope this video has been in any way insightful. I know it's a little bit of a departure from what we're typically doing, but folks have been asking for this. And so I figured what better opportunity while we've got a lot of brews in progress, but nothing really ready to do a video showing you what we've put together and give you some links so you can maybe assemble the same type of thing for yourself. So I'm curious your thoughts, if you're somebody who kegs instead of bottles, what equipment am I missing or what things can we do to build a more robust kegging system beyond obviously building that kegerator? Let us know in the comments. And if you've got questions about kegging, also drop those in the comments. I or somebody else may be able to help you out. As always, you can find us on Instagram and Pinterest at doing the most okay and our website is doingthemost.org. Until next time, keep doing the most.